For over 150 years, citizens of Alabama and the Southeast have looked to Auburn University to solve complex problems that yield to very specialized knowledge and research. On nearly every frontier of our endeavor, what was unthinkable a decade ago is commonplace today. But the finite nature of our natural resources has proved to be a boundary that is difficult, if not impossible, to cross and thus how we manage these resources and develop alternative renewable resources is vital to our well-being, if not our survival. When we consider well-being and survival, two resources come immediately to mind, oil and water. As we look to the future, we can see alternatives to oil and coal. There are simply no alternatives to water. In Alabama, in most years, we're blessed with an abundance of fresh water. But now in 2007, we face the worst drought in our history. This drought has brought to the forefront related issues such as water quality, availability of surface and groundwater, and potential conflicts among municipalities, industry, and agriculture. We know that droughts are cyclical, however, the related issues are not. Therefore, these water problems need to be addressed now. In the southeast, we've rarely thought about water shortages, but with each passing day, more people demand more water. Even as we need more water, we add pollutants to the supply that we have, and we convert forests to cities, diminishing nature's capability to filter those pollutants. By the year 2025, Birmingham's demand for water will exceed its supply. By that same year, much of Mobile and Baldwin counties will be paved by streets, sidewalks, and shopping malls, greatly reducing rain infiltration and groundwater recharge. Despite the stress on our water supply, our state has some of the highest biodiversity in the world, a huge number of aquatic plants and animals, and maintaining this biodiversity, along with supplying ample quantities of water for industrial, agricultural, and municipal uses, is the dilemma that we face. In a very real sense, Alabama is one large watershed. It connects Decatur to Mobile, Florence to the Wiregrass, and if the water supply is stressed in one part of the state, that stress will be felt everywhere in the state. At Auburn, with our years of land-grant experience, we know how to bridge the gap between science, policies, and people. We can bring practical, tangible solutions to the issues that face all Alabama's citizens. In June of 2007, Auburn University's Water Resources Center hosted the Water Resources Conference. This event drew more than 200 participants, including Auburn faculty, state policymakers, representatives from federal agencies, and industry and experts from southeastern universities. They discussed the changes necessary to protect freshwater resources in the state and the nation. The conference focused on water policy, watershed issues, irrigation, and water conservation. The conversation touched on security, human health issues, climate, the interrelationship of water and alternative energy, and the sustainability of ground and surface water supplies. Water issues are very complex, and narrow approaches to this complexity generally fail. At Auburn, we have a framework for collaboration that is unique. It allows us to integrate expertise from many disciplines, such as hydrology, economics, and environmental sciences, to create comprehensive solutions. Um, it's, it's an astonishing thing that, you know, we're sending, you know, spacecraft out into space, you know, all the time, but we still have a billion people here on Earth who don't have access to a safe supply of drinking water. For the most part, the things that we contemplate that a terrorist might use are things that water companies have experience with. Their day-to-day -day work is to try and keep the water safe and clean and pure. And all we're talking about is a situation where people intentionally put things into water as opposed to perhaps they're coming into water accidentally. In Alabama, a severe drought is taking place right now and we have to you know, mitigate this drought by using irrigation system in North Alabama by harvesting excess water which is running you know, from storm water. If we can capture that and build a dam or some you know, ponding and we can save that water and use it for supplementing irrigation. 
in terms of water quality or also water quality is becoming you know degrading or water quality is uh, pollute you know pollutants are coming from all kinds of sources so we have to protect our water for drinking fishing and swimming top water resource issues i think would be for every use we got in the state as far as agricultural production all sorts from the drought to have good clean drinking water good water for recreation uh, it, it's just an all-around deal. When the situation is like it is right now with drought, we understand and we see that we've got water problems. Next week it may go to raining and we'll forget all about it. Irrigation historically has a 20% return over a 10-year period. Now this particular year that we're in a drought, um, I will have a 100% return. I invested in four systems this year and finish building them in May, the amount of money that I spent in that one year will be the yield difference that I'll receive this year because it literally has not rained. So any crop that I make will be directly derived from the water I put out there and those monies um, equal. So that's a 100% return. Things like drip irrigation, for example, um, can both increase yield in a lot of cases and reduce the amount of water that needs to be applied to the cropland um, to make that, that crop production happen. Um, at the moment, 1% of the world's irrigated land is under drip, so we have a lot of potential for um, exploring how to expand that, that use of, of a very efficient technology, which delivers water directly to the roots of plants, and so it minimizes evapotranspiration. Uh, plants like getting water exactly when they need it in the quantities they they need so their yields tend to be tend to be higher. Right now we sample the water quality or the state samples the water quality and they can tell you tomorrow whether or not you should have been in the water today whether you have a chance of getting ill because the test takes 24 hours to process. We're looking to process the test now in two hours so the sample can be taken this morning at 7 a.m. by 9 a.m. we can tell you whether or not you should be at that beach at that location for that day or if your chances of getting ill are greater and maybe you should go to a beach that's a little further down the road that is a little cleaner this morning. We're not a research agency. We rely on the university and others to tell us what needs to be done based on research and scientific data. And then we try to take that information and implement it into a, some type of program that'll actually help the landowners. So it's networking, learning new technology, uh, rubbing shoulders with the scientific community that allows us to provide that technical assistance out there in the field to the land user, users that need it. We have to have a more comprehensive policy that really looks forward rather than looks backward. Typically in our country, and I think in, in, in this state maybe more so, uh, we're going to have to categorize this as, as where the threat is. Uh, what is going to be the cost of not having this policy? Uh, we take our water for granted. Um, we, we don't see from an industrial standpoint is an impediment to, to growth or new industry. Um, if we're not able to articulate that we really have a problem other than just a drought, uh, a long-term issue here uh, that threatens us, and I don't think we're going to get a uh, public engagement. I just really encourage the state of Alabama to take this opportunity and move forward to learn from the lessons of your neighboring states. Uh, there aren't standards for developing water management plans as maybe there are for water quality programs and that sort of thing. So um, learning from your neighbors, trying to avoid their, their mistakes and uh, being proactive again because it's a whole lot cheaper to, to be proactive than to go back and try to restore the degraded habitats that uh, so many of us have to live with. We have a lot of water-related issues, but I think the biggest problem that we have in Alabama right now with regard to water is education, and particularly education of our legislators. I mean, the information that we have here today is, and yesterday is just wonderful. There's so much information out there, so much great research that is going on, but unless we can get it in the hands of the right people, our elected officials, I, I don't know. There's so many challenges with regard to water that we, we're going to need a lot of talent and a lot of creativity and a lot of new ideas uh, to solve these, these, these challenges, to deal with these challenges and solve these problems. Um, and I think what's important is that we sort of have a shared vision of where we want to get to. 
with our management of water. And um, to me, it's, it's very important that we, we sort of hold that vision so that we have a sense whether we're in engineering or ecosystem science or land use planning or economics or sociology, um, that we're really talking about um, providing a water secure world at the end of the day, that we want all living things to have enough water to survive, people and all the creatures that we share this planet with. Many years ago, Albert Einstein said, we can't solve problems by using the same kind of thinking we used when we created them. Our water-related issues are tremendously complex, and to respond to them, we must think in new ways. At a university, we can bring together a range of expertise to look at the problems from many perspectives and unravel the complexity. At a land-grant university, we not only have the scholarly expertise, we have the commitment and the skill to translate this ability into tangible solutions. At Auburn, it is vital that we respond and deliver solutions that look to the future and not to the past. Crisis and opportunity often go hand in hand. Though we face challenges, we confront them at a time when we have the skill and the knowledge to act rather than react. Today, we can change the landscape, bring near-term results, and long-term benefits.